Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. Today, uh, in this episode, we have uh, Dr. Aneka Hatton again with us and today we'll be talking about uh, research. So welcome, Dr. Hatton. Uh, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Just uh, as we are starting it, we want to uh, give a shout out to your social media accounts. Dr. Hatton is uh, there on Twitter, so you can follow her at uh, Aneka Hatton MD on Twitter. This is her LinkedIn profile and she's on Docs Media as well. So, uh, Dr. Hutton, um, uh, question for you is research. You have uh, been involved in research now, and then you know you're moving forward into it. So, can you tell us what was your earlier interest? How did you start uh, thinking or doing about clinical research? So, the the reason I got involved in the first place is that as I would learn more about patients and medicine, I had questions of why do we do it this way and why don't we do it another way? And I would always get referred to big academic journals by my attendings, um, some amazing paper in New England Journal that tells us exactly why we should do steroids for this many days or you know, why we practice medicine the way we do. Um, so I had a couple of questions of my own and I realized there weren't great answers for it and there was a little bit of a knowledge gap and I thought maybe we can close that gap a little bit. Um, so this is how I first became you know, interested in it. It also is sort of a requirement if you want to go on to fellowship, you know, to make yourself more competitive, it's a, it's a really good way to get involved. Fantastic. So you are now in PGY1, almost finishing your PG, uh, postgraduate year one. Um, knowing what you know now, wish, uh, would you change anything before you start your residency, uh, right during your medical school or in between when you're applying for residency in terms of clinical research? So, um, I didn't do much research in my PGY1. It was, it was my PGY, end of my PGY2. Yeah, sorry. So, so, you know, at the end of my PGY1, I started having these questions. And as I entered into PGY2, I really sort of fleshed them out a little bit more and figured out a plan and a protocol for them. Um, Honestly, I wish I had gotten started sooner. Um, one, because if I had, you know, practiced the IRB process sooner, you get more familiar with it. It's just something that comes more easy. The first time doing anything is always a challenge. So I wish I had done that earlier. Um, and then just the timeline of projects. So now that I'm, you know, halfway through my PGA2 year, um, it's quite challenging to create a timeline of a project that works. Uh, can we do this in basically one year uh, to get it published or is this something that's going to be ongoing when I leave this program? So it's a challenge. I wish I had gotten started earlier. Um, I think it's daunting for residents. Uh, we don't know how to, to get the ball rolling. So what I would say is an MS4 as a medical student in their last year and as a PGY1 starting out, find somebody that knows the IRB process, somebody that maybe is trying to go into the same specialty that you're interested in, who's actively doing research and learn as much as you can from them. Um, sort of sponge off of the knowledge that they have. And then when you start to come up with clinical questions of your own, you'll already know the process. Absolutely, and thank you for correcting us. I know that you're on PGY2, I end up saying uh, by mistake that PGY1. And for those who have not been familiar with the research process, when you, Dr. Hutton mentioned about IRB, that means Institutional Review Board, uh, mm -hmm. it is known as IRB, or it could be known as Ethical Committee in your countries or in your, your medical schools or your uh, hospitals as well. That is a process that if you have to look at the, any patient data, you have to go through and get an approval for the proposal. So what advice do you have for our viewers who are looking into medical residency uh, or they are PGY1 at this point, what one or two advices you can give uh, uh, from your own experience in terms of it? So find what it is that you're passionate about. Uh, research takes a long time. Um, and even just drafting the protocol takes a lot of reading. I think I read something like 40 papers just to draft one protocol. Um, not all of them were papers that accurately you know, represent what I was looking for. So you have to sort of slog through a lot of muck before you get to the stuff that you're really looking for and, and learning how to get faster at that. Um, I think, I think, you know, familiarizing yourself with the IRB process is, is a really big deal. Um, but why I think it's important to stay passionate about something and find what you're passionate about is it takes a lot of hours. So if you don't love the project you're doing, it's going to be such a burden to do the necessary time. Um, whereas if you're excited about the project and I can't believe this is what I just found out and I can't wait to get the project off the ground, you're going to propel your own project. Your principal investigators, the people that you ask to be you know, on the project with you, 
they'll help you, but you are sort of the, the jet engine behind the project. No one's going to make it happen if you don't make it happen. And if you don't really care about what you're doing, it's never going to get off the ground. So definitely be passionate about it. Try to identify what your interests are. Try to find a good mentor um, in your field. So if you know you want to do critical care or you know you really love nephrology, find somebody who's active in research or at the very least is okay with you being active in research and will support you as, as a PI on a lot of your projects. Yeah. My other sneaky tip is there's something called MedEd Portal through the American College of Physicians. And so when we think of research, I know I fell into this trap so many times. Um, we think of, you know, these big randomized control trials that probably as a resident, you're not going to be able to, to accomplish. But if you look on MedEd Portal, something that is an IRB approved research project can be something as simple as instituting a debrief in your hospital. So there are research projects that you can do that focus on improving your residents and this is a really great way if you look on MedEd Portal to find inspiration and to get an IRB off the ground in a pretty timely manner and because it's you know a positive intervention for the residency program and it's not negatively impacting patients there are a lot less uh, areas of red tape. Absolutely and then uh, if for those uh, who wants to go a little bit more detail Dr. Hutton myself and Dr. Kaur has recorded <clears throat> one of the uh, uh, podcast in terms of some of the basics of research so we will uh, put that description in our uh, video link as well so a uh, great um very quickly in terms of so what you've learned so far like some of the basics of clinical research uh a, a, if one or two small tips for our viewers so they're not too scared but they can say if you know uh, it could be done this is some of the basics i've learned about clinical research so i think most of the basics I've learned from you, which is have a pretty clear outline, have a good guideline of, of what you're doing. So the questions that you always tell me is what is known, what is not known. And then if you can identify what the knowledge gap is and how what you're doing might contribute to closing that knowledge gap, you're in good shape. Uh, try to keep it nice and organized when you start out. Um, try to tidy your ideas up and, and don't go overboard with the number of resources you find. Well, I'm glad that you're recording some of those things and we have a video <laughs> recorded on that as well, that how to write your background section in terms of those four points you answer, which you mentioned. So please do watch that video. And then we have something written on, uh, recorded on uh, discussion portion as well. So uh, good overall. So as a summary to our viewers who are yet to get into residency or who are PGY1, what is your biggest takeaway as one or two point perspective for the MSV? Uh, get started early. And there's always somebody in your program who's involved in something, uh, even if it's just learning how to write an abstract when you're a medical student or learning how to write an abstract when you're a first PGA one uh, the sooner you get involved, the bigger things you're going to be able to do while you're in residency. Um, just get started. Absolutely. Great advice. Great advice. Thank you so much uh, for being with us today. Again, uh, I know how busy you are. And uh, for our viewers, please do like the video, subscribe the channel. Otherwise, you will not be notified uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, these excellent interviews. We'll just quickly show Dr. Hutton's uh, uh, media uh, profile. So social media profile on Twitter at Annika Hutton MD and LinkedIn and Docs with as well. Do uh, like it, follow her, uh, share. Uh, tag her as well and then do uh, share and like and uh, subscribe to our channel as well thank you so much again and we will uh, happy to have you uh, again as well thank you thank you so much